All right. I tell you what, I love... So another random fact about Nathan Albert is like I'm, um, I cry at everything. So like you could get me a Hallmark card and I'll open it up and be like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And then there's like a commercial on TV for a car and it's like a family in a car and they're, it's amazing. And I start crying at that and then my wife will tell me she loves me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you. Um, and I'm out in nature and sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, Jesus, it is so beautiful. Thank you. But one of the things that always gets me crying uh, is worship. I don't know what it is about singing with a group of people to Jesus, but I like become this emotional mess. Um, so back in the corner, I was like this, and then most of the time I would do this a lot, and then I would do this, and then I would do this a lot. So that isn't like some like special way to worship. That's just me wiping my tears. But it is cool to see. Um, one of the things I love about coming to camps like this and, and being a uh, getting to be a pastor for a weekend with you is to stand in the back and just watch you all worship. Um, it is, for me, a glimpse of heaven that, um, yeah, it's just beautiful to see you worshiping Jesus. So um, I enjoy it, and I am so thankful I am here for the weekend. Um, last night, we talked about Tove. What does Tove mean? Do you remember? Good. Good? Yes, that's right. I just totally filthified my glasses in that... Um, Yes, but tov means good, beautiful, and working the way we were designed to, or designed to work. And so we saw that God created everything tov, but as we sin and as we rebel from God or as we try to live our own lives, uh, things become untov. But Christ uh, responded to our sin and our untovedness through Jesus and through his life and his death and his res- or on the death on the cross and resurrection, and he has come to retove the world. And now as followers of Jesus, if you decide to become a follower of Jesus, you have a call on your life, and that is to be tov, that you are to live in such a way that the world will, that you will help God make the world re, uh, be, be tov and retove. So that eventually, um, when God returns, and when he joins heaven and earth together, that the world will be tov again. It will be uh, Eden, it will be paradise, it will be wholeness and harmony and shalom. All of it will be just the way God designed it to work. It'll be more good and more beautiful than uh, we've ever thought or ever imagined. So that's what we talked about uh, last night. This morning, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer and looking at Psalm 139. Um, how many, um, how many uh, of you think at times prayer is pretty boring? It's okay. I, I think so sometimes. How, how many of you sometimes pray and you're like, what's the point right now? How many, right? Or how many times, maybe do you pray, does your mind wander, right? Yes, right? I'm all, this, this is, happens to me all the time. I'll be praying and I'll be like, dear Jesus, I thank you for the day and I don't have any groceries. What am I going to have for lunch? I'm excited for lunch. How long is lunch away? It's like two hours. I could wait that long. But oh yeah, Jesus, I thank you. Um, and God, I would ask that today you be with me and, and wait, what am I, wh- where am I? What's, yeah, totally, yeah, squirrel. That's totally right, yeah. Sometimes, uh, for me, prayer can be boring. Like, uh, you know, like, it's just, I get distracted. I get very, very distracted where I'm like, all right, I'm going to spend an hour in prayer. And then after two, I'm like praying and praying and praying. I'm like, whew, I think I've been praying a long time. And then I kind of open my eye. I'm like, let's look at the clock. Two minutes. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, what prayer is... That is, that's, it's only been two minutes. Sometimes prayer for me, uh, growing up, prayer is just a ritual. So in my family, actually, before every meal, uh, we would pray the same prayer every meal. We would say, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. That's what we would, before every meal. It, it wasn't like, it got to the point where like, I didn't even know what I was saying. It was just like, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this, and then it just becomes like sounds, right? Come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let this food to us be blessed. Like it, that, it, what does that mean? Right? But sometimes prayer, even like the Lord's Prayer, right? In some churches, we say the Lord's Prayer all the time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. But it just becomes this ritual, and, and we just do it because we have to. And we're somewhat disconnected. Sometimes, I, I had a youth pastor that was like, Nathan, you need to get up really early and pray. And I was, that was never good news for me, because I, I, I am not a morning person. 
So, but that was like ingrained in me that I had to get up early. And so I'd get up early, I'd set my alarm clock really early, and then this is what would usually happen. I'd get up and I was so grumpy. And I'd be like, God, I hate this. <laughs> Dear Jesus, I am so tired. Can you wake me up? Can you, can you just, can you just, and then I would fall asleep. <laughs> and, then I'd, and then I'd wake back up and I'd be like, what? I just fell asleep for a whole hour. I was supposed to be praying that whole time. And I would feel so bad. I'd be like, I'm so sorry, God. I didn't mean to fall asleep while I was praying. I just am so tired. And I just, I just am so tired. Right? So prayer sometimes for me was like totally this distracted thing distracting thing or like I never was able to like really focus on, on prayer. Uh, sometimes it was just this ritual where I didn't even know what I was saying. It was just like I had to do it. It didn't mean anything for me. Sometimes it was just a list of things where I was like, God, I need you to do this and help me with this class assignment and help me get a good grade and help me do this and help me do that. And God, I need you to help me do this. So just this list that I was presenting to God. Other times it was um, just like torture, where I was tired. And I was like, God, I do not want to pray because I would rather be sleeping. And over all this, I thought like, well, God, are you upset at me because I wasn't praying? How we think about God, or how we think about, uh, yeah, how we think about God actually affects how we pray. Uh, sometimes we think God is a vending machine, right? So our prayers are these lists of things we want from God. It's like a machine that would, dis we think God is like a machine that will dispense things to us. So prayer is like putting money in the vending machine and then, God, I want this grade or God, I need your help here. I need this new toy. God, I need some more money. God, I want peace. God, make things go the way I want them to go. Now, please dispense them. I will wait. And so our prayer is like putting money in the vending machine and we press the button. It's like, God, I want this. And we just wait. God, give me what I asked for. Give me what I asked for. But here's, here's the problem with that. Sometimes the vending machine doesn't seem to work, right? And we don't get what we asked for. And so if, if we don't get what we want and, and if God is like some vending machine, well, we give up on prayer. We're like, well, prayer doesn't work. And then sometimes we'll even give up on God. Be like, well, what the heck, God? I asked for that and you didn't give it to me. And then we get like bitter and angry at God because God didn't give us what we wanted. Sometimes we think about God as like a heavenly Santa Claus. We're like, dear God, here's all the good things I've done, heavenly Santa Claus. I did this, and then I did this, and I was really nice to my brother, and I obeyed my parents, and I did this. I was really good at that. Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, now can you give me the following things, please? I would like this new toy, and I would like this, and I would like you to be with me, and can you speak to me? Oh, yes, I, I did mess up a couple times. Here the, here's my naughty list. Um, but don't give me coal. Because look at my good list. <laughs> but then the same thing happens, right? If we don't get what we want, if it, if it doesn't seem like God gives us the presence we want, it's like, come on, God. I asked for all these things. I, I did all these nice things. Well, come on. And, and sometimes we give up praying. We're like, well, I guess prayer doesn't work. Or then again, we get bitter at God or angry at God saying, God, I asked very nicely why didn't you give this to me? Sometimes we think God is like this mean punisher who's out to get us. So our prayers are very much like, God, I am so sorry. I'm such a bad person. Please, I've done a lot of bad things. Please forgive me. Please don't punish me. Please don't let, please don't let bad things happen to me. God, please, 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 uh, please just make it go away. Please, we, don't punish me. Don't hurt me. Please. <laughs> and, and then if we, sometimes if we think God is punishing us, right? Like life isn't going our way. We think, oh, well, God is punishing me. And, and well, I guess I didn't pray enough and God's just going to punish me. And well, I'm going to give up on God and, and not really pray. For a long time, I thought prayer was, was kind of like this. That prayer was just this. And, and if I'm honest with, like if I wrote down every single prayer I had throughout a day and I had you read them, a lot of them are like just things I want from God. God, uh, get me safely to Colorado. God, uh, help me pay the bills. God, uh, protect m my wife. Uh, God, be with me with this. God, uh, help me with my job. God, I'm really overwhelmed and stressed. Help me l be less stressed. And sometimes I thought it was just a way to get things, like get God to like me. God, I'm praying, so can you love me more? Will you love me more now? But what if prayer isn't a way to get things from God at all? What if prayer is simply 
to get God. Instead of praying to get things from God, what if we prayed just to get God? What if prayer wasn't to get, wasn't to get, uh, get blah, blah, blah. whoa, that's a tongue twister. What if praying wasn't to get God to like me? What if it was just a way for me to get to know God? What if, uh, I, I think about this, what if my prayers were more like my conversations with my wife, Kate? So uh, my wife, Kate, and I, not too long ago, we were driving in the car, and we, were, we had some spare time, so we just decided to drive around this town where our church is, uh, and we were looking at houses, we are just driving around, I'm like, oh, that's a nice house, and then uh, we'd be talking about life or things we were uh, looking forward to, and, and then we kept driving, and, and, and topics would change, and, and then we'd talk about family and what's going on in family life. Then we talk about work and sometimes we would just be silent for a while and we'd just be in each other's company, just being with one another. Then there would be silence and then maybe one of us would, would say, you know what, I'm really angry at this that happened the other day. And so we'd voice kind of what we're angry at. And then we kept driving and then even though we were angry, we'd be like, oh, I'm so angry. And the, oh, that's a pretty house. That's really nice. But yeah, so I'm really angry at this and Oh, well, what do you want to do later? You want to go get food? I don't really want to get that kind of, I don't, I don't want pizza tonight. All right, well, we don't have to get pizza. And, and, and then it just went back and forth and back and forth. What if that was more of our prayer life with God? That, that we were able to talk to God and spend time to God and, and uh, that we were able to just sit in silence sometimes. And sometimes we were able to voice our frustrations and sometimes we were able to ask for certain things. And other times we just uh, asked God to, to be near to us. Prayer isn't to get things from God. Prayer is to get God. Uh, one of uh, my favorite authors, one second. Um, one of my favorite authors talks about uh, sometimes thinking God gets upset at you that you don't pray enough or that uh, your prayers aren't good enough. Or sometimes, sometimes I'll be in a church and I'll, I'll hear someone pray. Maybe it's the worship leader or a pastor and you hear them pray and you're like, whoa, they're so like holy and like they, they can really pray. They're like professional prayers, right? You know, they're like, you, you hear them pray and you're like, wow, I don't pray that way. They're like, passionate and powerful and you're like i want i want to pray like, like i totally know people like that, that i'm like they're praying and i'm like yeah how do you how do you do that is that like a special talent right and then i would feel bad like oh i don't i don't really pray that way so i don't want to pray out loud uh, I, I i can't pray because well they were so good at prayer and i'm not that good at prayer so i don't want to pray right uh, one of my favorite authors responds to that with this analogy he says let's say you give a child Right? A little child comes over to your house, or maybe it's your uh, son or daughter, it's your brother or sister, they're real little, and you give them a box of crayons and a coloring book for their birthday, and, and they go off and they're coloring, and they come back, and they're like, you know, maybe a day later or a few hours later, and they're like, I, I made you, a, I colored you this picture, and she's super proud of it, right? She's like, here, it's for you, and you know, she's grinning, and she's super excited, and so you take the picture, and you're like, thank you so much, I'm so excited, and you look at it, and the sun is black. <laughs> the grass is purple. The grass is like all the it, the grass is like in the sky even. And, and the sky is brown. And the house is green. There are squiggle marks all over. And, and then she's like, "That's the that's you, but you look like a blob of like brown stuff." Or you know, you're like, "Is that poo or is that me?" Um, and, and then there's like yellow squiggles all over, but, but you don't like, and you don't like take that picture and you're like, child, this is horrible. Get back to work. No, that's not what we do, right? Yeah. You don't just go, get the sun is orangey reddish, yellowish, not black, right? We don't do that. No, we will take that picture and be like, thank you so much. And we'll like hang it up or we'll, we'll show somebody like, this is what she made me. We'll put it on our fridge. This, a little child can never do a bad coloring job. They can never color badly because they're expressing, they're being creative, they're enjoying c the coloring process. Just like a child cannot do a bad coloring job, you and I can never do a bad prayer job. That, 
God doesn't, God doesn't, when we pray before God, he isn't like, ah, oh, that's not good enough. God's like, oh, thank you for coloring that for me. Or, or think of it this way. Another way that uh, I love to think about prayer. It, 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 again, it, it involves a child, but, but maybe you've seen a child and, and they see their parent or their mom or their dad and um, the parent like picks them up and the child like is looking all over the place. They're not really focused on the dad or the mom and they're just like looking around and then they're like playing with the dad's face and then they like go back to playing normal and looking around and, and maybe the, the, the kid will be like, dad, you know what I did today? I did this and then I went here and then um, I went to school and I did all this. Oh, and then I colored this picture, but I colored the sun black. Um, and then I, um, we went and got Twizzlers, and I really love Twizzlers. Dad, have you ever had a Twizzler? Have you had a Twizzler, Dad? I like Twizzlers, right? And they're tailing all this stuff. But then eventually they start, like, getting super tired, right? And then they just, like, you know, kids, like, fall asleep while they're, while they're talking, right? So they'll be, like, you'll be, like, holding a kid, and they'll be, like, yeah. And, and then I went, and, oh, have you ever seen that movie? I saw that movie, and the movie was, the movie was really, the movie was, and you'd be, like, sleep while talking about a movie, right? But the, and the dad and the mom, or the dad or the mom don't get mad, like, you were talking, finish your sentence. <laughs> we were having a conversation. What, you're just going to end it? Do you not care about me? No, that, that's, not, that's not what they do, right? They love that. That the child, the child is choosing to spend time with the parent. The parent loves that the child is like jumping up in their arms. And the parent loves that the child is telling them about their day and talking with them. And when they fall asleep, oh, they think it's the most beautiful thing ever. They're like, oh, he was so tired, but he fell asleep while he was sharing about the movie. That is just like prayer. How many times have, have we fallen? I, I, I always fall asleep while praying right? And, and for a long time, I thought God was like, finish the prayer. Fin I'm waiting. I'm not going to give you what you want because you didn't finish your sentence. That's not, that's not what it's like, right? That's totally not. No, instead, God is like, ah, oh, he fell asleep while he was in my presence. His, his, his attention was on me. He was spending time with me. That's what prayer, it, isn't that so much more beautiful to think about but think about prayer that way, that, that the child is choosing to spend time with the, with the parent, and prayer is choosing to spend time with God, even if we fall asleep, that God doesn't get angry with us that we fall asleep, but God is actually saying, oh, the last thing he wanted to do tonight before he fell asleep was spend time with me. I love that. That has changed the way I look at, um, look at prayer. Now, throughout scripture, um, there's countless, countless prayers. The book of Psalms, right? These are all sorts of prayers. A lot of them are actually songs. A lot of them were prayers that the church turned into songs, and then we sing them in church, which is crazy. They're like private, private conversations with God that then became worship songs, and, and there's now a book in the Bible on Psalms. But the book of Psalms is this beautiful collection of hymns and songs and prayers. They're people trying to get God. At times, yes, they're asking things from God, but more importantly, every prayer, they want God. They're trying to get God. It, it, they're, not, they're not vending machine prayers. Excuse me. They're not uh, at thinking God is Santa Claus. Uh, they're not afraid of God's punishment, but they are conversations. Over and over, you'll read them, that these are conversations with God. That at times, they're, they're pouring out their praise and adoring God just proclaiming, oh God, you are so good at this, you're so good at that, thank you for this, I love you, you're wonderful. At times they're pouring out their own hearts and their desires, God, I need this, protect me. Some of them are, are, are asking God for, for, for protection or, or pleading with God to rescue them and to save them. At times people are so angry in the Psalms that they're literally like just screaming and yelling at God. God, I need this. Protect this. Do this. What are you doing? Where have you been? Are you, have you abandoned me? And they're angry and upset. Sometimes they're hurt. Sometimes they're so sad. They're just full of grief. And they're like, God, I, I want to give up. Life is so hard. Our, our theme verse, 
Psalm 139, 14, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, comes from Psalm 139. And it is this beautiful prayer. It, it, it's this beautiful prayer that actually reflects all of that we, we've talked about so far this morning. At the beginning of the prayer, David, who wrote it, uh, begins uh, expressing how wonderful God is. He says things like, God, you, are, you know when I do this, you know when I do that. You, your works are wonderful. I know that. Then that partway through, he kind of gets sidetracked. And then he, he focuses on himself, like, God, you've made me this wonderful creation. And then all of a sudden it gets weird, and it's like, God, kill these people. I, I hate these people. I am so mad. I, I hate those who hate you and, and do something and bring revenge. And then he, like, gets sidetracked again. He's like, at the end, he goes, but God, search me. You know my thoughts. They're anxious, and they're stressed out. Know my heart. Change me transform me. I love that. I love that. So open, if you have your Bibles, open to one, Psalm 139. So what I want to do, uh, we're going to read through it, we're going to talk a little bit about it, and then we're going um, we're gonna to do what uh, is called like a spiritual practice and a way to read scripture and to read this psalm in a new way. Psalm 139. The psalms are basically right in the middle of your Bible, so if you open your Bible and just open it up, odds are you'll be pretty close to the psalms. <clears throat> so as I, read, as I read through the psalm, I'm going to be reading from the NIV. So um, some of you might have different translations. That's fine. Um, but as, you, as I read it, I want you to listen for a couple things. Okay? I want you to listen where David is praising God or adoring God or, or talking about how good God is, right? And then I want you to listen where David is asking for things and, and what is he asking for? What needs does he have? And then I want you to listen where, where even David starts to complain with, to God or, or argue with God. And, and then I want you to listen just, just overall, how, how is this a conversation with God? All right? So here we go. Psalm 139 begins with like this. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me. Oh, sorry. Before, uh, I totally just skipped a line, didn't I? Did I? No. I'm fine. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, well, surely the darkness will hide me and light become night around me. Well, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created me, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. This is where it transitions. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God. Know my heart. 
Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The very first part of this psalm, you'll see that it's describing who God is. Who God is. That, that, that God is so big that he has searched David. That he knows David. That he knows when David stands up and when he sits down. He, he knows every word on David's tongue and our tongues before we even speak them. David even says, where can I go from you, God? If I try to run away from you as far as I can, you're going to be there. You're going to, even if, if I go to the highest heights, if I go to the deepest depths, you're still going to be there. Then the second part of that, um, that psalm, he, he talks about uh, what God has done. That God, you've created my inmost being. You've, you've knitted me together. Your works are wonderful. If I were to count them, they would outnumber all the grains of sand. And then he like totally gets distracted, right? And he starts, he starts complaining to God. Oh, God, if only you would slay the wicked. Get them away from me. They're bloodthirsty. They speak evil. I don't like them. And then it's like he has this realization. At the, in the last sentence, he says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Well, just the two sentences before, those were his anxious thoughts. His anxious thoughts and, and his heart was talking about these, these, he's angry at these other people. And then he realizes, oh, God, rescue me from those anxious thoughts. Search my heart. Know what's offensive in me. That, that, that maybe viewing those people in such mean way, maybe that's offensive. And transform me, lead me in the way everlasting. I, I love this psalm. Uh, and and I've, um, I'm actually, when I get home on, on when I'm leaving on Wednesday, I have two days to preach a sermon that I'm supposed to preach on um, the Lord's Prayer. And uh, I'm going to surprise the church and preach on this instead. Um, so, um, because I love this psalm so much. But what, one of the things we're going to do this morning, uh, is we're going to try something, we're going to try something new. Maybe you've done this before, maybe you haven't, um, but Christianity is a lived faith. It's an experienced faith. We can't just talk about Christianity or talk about Jesus and then go leave and be like, well, that was a nice talk, that was a good conversation, and, and do nothing about it. To be a Christian, you have to live like a Christian. Uh, to try Christianity, you have to I mean, to be a Christian, you have to try Christianity. To be a Christian, you must live like a Christian. To become better at praying, you have to pray. To, to be a better worshiper, you have to worship. Uh, to know more of God's word, you have to actually read God's word. So uh, what we're going to do this morning is one of my favorite things when it comes to reading scripture. It's called Lectio Divina. That's a Latin term that means divine listening. Um, let me give you an analogy from my acting years uh, on this. When I was in, a, um, I did a lot of acting training. I went to London and I did acting training over in London. And um, I had an acting professor actually here in the U.S. Um, who was a re uh, really great professor, and she was uh, did a lot on Shakespeare. And so as we were in this acting class together, we did uh, Shakespeare, and we she gave us a monologue from Shakespeare. Now Shakespeare's monologues, I mean, they, if you've read them, they're tough. They're like, I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, foregone all custom of exercise, right? And there's like, um, to be or not to be, that is the question, you know, like, and you're like, what, what, what is he saying, right? And um, so she gave us all these big long monologues, right? And she's like, I want, you to I want you to memorize these. We're going to perform these and act these uh, in, in a few weeks. And, but she said this. She goes, take this home tonight and read this until something happens. And we were like, huh? She's like, read this monologue until something happens. And someone, you know, we raised our hand and we were like, what do you mean just read it until something happens? Like, read it once and then we're done? And she's like, no, read it until something happens. We're like, 10 times? She's like, maybe. 70 times? Maybe. She's like, what will happen with Shakespeare is if you read it over and over and over and over, if you read it until something happens, eventually Shakespeare is going to click in your mind and it's going to make perfect sense. And we're like, really? And it's true. So I have this monologue memorized. I have of late, it's from Hamlet. I have of late, but wherefore I know not. Lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercise. And indeed it goes so heavy with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. What the heck does that mean, Shakespeare? Right? But as I look at it, I have of late, but wherefore I know not. 
I have of late, but wherefore I know not. I have of late, but wherefore I know not. Lately, I don't know when, I have of late, but wherefore I know not. I've lost all my mirth, forgone a custom of exercise. I have of late, but wherefore I know not. So lately, I've lost all my mirth, I've forgone a custom of exercise. I'm, I'm, lately, I'm doing things I don't normally do. I have of late, but wherefore I know not. Lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercise. Uh, uh, forgone all custom of exercise. And it seems to me this sterile promontory. It, it, it seems to me this this earth, this this sterile place where I'm looking, is, is more than just a promontory. And it goes on and on and on. And, and so it finally clicked. And I had this realization. Oh my goodness, you can do the exact same thing with scripture. Read it until something happens. Read it until something happens. There was one, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and, and we'll actually hear it tomorrow night. Um, it talks about how Jesus is in us, and we are in Jesus, and Jesus is in God. And I remember reading that verse over and over, and I read it until something happened. And, and I was sitting in a blue chair in my living room, and I was reading the Bible. And my dad was in the living room, and it clicked. And I just went, God, or not God. I yelled, Dad, uh, God is in me, and I am in Jesus, and Jesus is in God. And my dad was probably like, son, you crazy. But it was this moment where it clicked. I read it over and over and over and over and over, and it clicked. So what we're going to do is what's called Lectio Divina. This is a way that we, we uh, like it says, it's divine listening. It's a Latin term that means divine listening. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Scripture, and hopefully as we listen to Scripture, something will click, and, and it'll, it'll, uh, God will speak directly through us. Um, now, Lectio Divina is a very long traditional um, it's been around for many, many years. Uh, it's an old way of reading scripture. Uh, it's, done, it's one that you can do here uh, by yourself. It's one you can do in a group. It, you can do it as your, uh, cabins, as w- in your cabins or with your counselors. Uh, a long time ago, this is how monks used to meditate and read scripture, that they would read a part of scripture over and over, and they would um, have certain responses to that. Um, and, and for me, this is honestly one of the ways that I feel God speaks to me most directly as I read scripture that there is something about reading a section of scripture three or four times and writing my response to it. And I feel God somehow through that scripture puts thoughts into my head that I then write down and I feel that that is totally God speaking to me. So what we're going to do, um, I need you to have like a, a section of your paper or a, a sheet of paper and at the top you can put Lectio Divina uh, or, Psal- or simply Psalm 139. <clears throat> If you want to spell out Lectio Divina, it's spelled L-E-C-T-I-O, that's the first word, and then Divina is D-I-V-I-N-A. Now before we do everything, um, what I'm going to do is, um, let me give us some instructions and then and what we're actually going to do, and then we'll go through it step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a part of Psalm 139 from the Bible. You'll listen to it. I don't want you to write anything. If you want to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. I just want you to listen to Scripture. And we're going to do this four times. We're going to listen to the same passage four times. And after each time, I'm going to have you write something down in response to what you hear. Um, And then uh, as we go, we'll, we'll give you time and I'll describe each of those. But we believe as Christians, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that, that the Holy Spirit, God himself, lives in us and lives through us. And so as we um, listen to Scripture, that God actually will give us thoughts um, and that this is a way to listen to those thoughts that we believe are from God, right? That we can listen to Scripture and God will just highlight something in that Scripture that maybe we didn't recognize when we read it a few minutes ago. Maybe it's a word, maybe it's a phrase, but something will click and we'll think, wow, God just pointed that out to me. So what we're going to do first, the first time you're going to read it, you're going to listen for a word or a phrase. It could just be one word. It could be a a, a sentence. But you're just going to listen for a word or phrase. The second time we read it, we're going to listen to that word or phrase again, and then we're going to define that word or phrase. What does it mean? What is, let's say, uh, the word is, well, let's look at the psalm. Uh, Let's say wings of the dawn, or yeah, wings of the dawn is your uh, verse or your phrase, right? Then you're going to define that. What does that mean? Then the third time you're going to, uh, we're going to listen to it again, you're going to write a letter to yourself from God. Now, this isn't like presumptuous, like, oh, you're God, uh, but this we trust that God actually gives us thoughts. It's like a type of journaling uh, that God gives us thoughts, and what is God trying to say to you from this verse? 
And then finally, we're going to end with kind of a, well, so what? Now what? Now that we've listened to this psalm and this word has kind of popped out, what does that mean for our lives? What are we supposed to do about it? What, do we need to do something? Is there something we need to change? What, is, what are we going to do? Is that making sense, kind of? Okay. So you can put like a number one at the top of your, I usually like to put a number one. Um, and what you'll do is listen to this, listen to this section of scripture. Um, you can close your eyes if you want. And then only when I'm done reading, I want you to write down a word or a phrase that pops out to you. So next to your number one, a word or a phrase from these verses that pop out to you. Okay. Let me pray for us. And then um, we'll, we'll do this exercise. Holy Spirit, we trust that you are in this place, that you are here. We trust that through singing uh, worship songs to you, uh, that this is now a holy temple. We trust that through the reading and preaching of your word, God, that you actually draw near to your people. And so we ask in these coming moments as we reflect upon your scriptures, that you would speak clearly to each student here, that you would uh, allow us to read this scripture until something happens. That, that something would pop out, that you, Holy Spirit, would direct us to hear something from your word in a way that we haven't heard before. And God, I ask humbly that you would just draw near uh, and let us fall more madly in love with your scriptures and fall more madly in love with you during this time. And so we pray this in your son's powerful name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so again, if you want to close your eyes, if you just want to, um, yeah, listen, but I'm going to read about six, ver six verses and listen for a word or a phrase that sticks out or pops out. All right? Here we go. This is Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If, my, if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. You created, me in my in, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So now write down your word or your phrase that stuck out to you. Your word or your phrase. Does anyone need a little more time? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to read this same passage, the same section again. This time, I want you to listen for your word or phrase. And when we're done reading it, what I want you to do is define that word or phrase. What does it mean? Give it a definition. If it's just simply the word everlasting, well, what does everlasting mean? If it's more of a phrase like, uh, where can I go from your presence? Well, what does that mean? Flesh it out. Give it a definition. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so listen again, Psalm 139, and then when I'm done, define your word or your phrase. Here we go. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So now define your word or your phrase. You can write a number two and then define your word or your phrase.
Does anyone need a little more time? No? All right, I'm going to read it one more time. This time you can put a number three there if you want. I'm going to read the same passage of Scripture again. I want you to, again, listen to, for your word or your phrase, uh, define it in your mind. And then when I'm done uh, reading, uh, what we're going to do is I want you to write a letter from God to you. So you can write, dear, you know, if I was doing I, I could write, dear Nathan. And then this letter from God, it, it, it's not like, don't think it's presumptuous or anything like that. But this is, what is God trying to say to you about this word or this phrase? Dear Nathan. Uh, for example, let's say my word is everlasting. Dear Nathan, uh, remember that I am everlasting. I am the God that was the alpha and the, me- the omega, the beginning and the end. You, you forget this so often. You get scared and you think that I'm not around or that I'm not near you. Nathan, remember that I am everlasting. I will be with you. I will be with you ever, forever, everlasting. You know, that sort of idea. Um, this is a way for us to, to focus our thoughts on what God is trying to say to you uh, in this passage. So I'm going to read it again, and then we'll take like three to five minutes, uh, plenty of time for you to kind of write that letter about what is God trying to say to you about this word or this phrase. Does that make sense? Okay, here we go. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So write your word or or write your letter from God to yourself about this word or your phrase. Maybe another minute or so.
for those who are still writing. Is anyone still writing? Do you need any more time, anyone? No? All right. I'm going to read it one last time. So uh, this time I want you to listen again uh, to the same scripture, to the same word or phrase that pops out. You can put a number four. This is the final one. This is the so what or now what. Uh, Now that you've heard this phrase, now that you've defined this word or phrase, that God's kind of made this word or phrase pop out to you. Now that God has written this uh, letter to you uh, about this word or this phrase that you need to be reminded, well, now what? Well, what does it mean? Uh, is there something you need to do? Is there someone you need to talk to? Is there something you need to pray about? Uh, wh- what is it you need to do? Now what? Now what? Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, here we go. One more time. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me, will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So now write down your, so what? Uh, What do you need to do? What's next? We need more time, maybe another 10 more seconds or so. So here's the fun part about it. Well, okay, two things. I'll share this. Here's, here's mine. Um, I'll share what mine is real quick, and then I'm um, do a couple things. Mine was, your hand will guide me. Uh, kind of this idea of, uh, you know, when you're holding, a hand, holding hands with someone and, and, and you're walking and, and they want to go one way and they lead you and they just move their hand to know that you're supposed to go a different way and you can just go whoop and you know how to go. Or, or like holding a, a kid's hand and they want to go this way and you just pull them this way. They know 
that God is guiding me. My letter was this, Dear Nathan, you say to me, even you praise me, that I'm, that I'm God and that I'm good and that I'm powerful and that I'm everlasting, but you forget it. You forget that I'm everlasting. You forget that darkness is light to me, that my, that my hand will guide you and that my hands hold you fast. Don't forget I'm holding you. I'm holding you. I will guide you. I always have. I always will. Remember my works. They're wonderful. I'm everlasting. And I'm here now, so stay close and stay aware of this truth. And my so what is uh, make prayer, uh, pray ser- seriously, pray. Uh, you need to make it more of a habit because I miss you. Um, uh, The cool thing about this is whether you realize it or not, I just taught you two things. One, I taught you a really simple way to read Scripture. So uh, this you can do on your own. You you can choose a a bit of of Scripture, and you can read it, and you could do this exact same framework. Another thing I just taught you to do is I just taught you how to um, lead a Bible study. Like this is, you could get together with your group of friends, with your youth group, uh, with uh, your, your cabin and your counselors, and you could do this once a day, um, I, I actually did this with my roommates. We, we used to do it um, before I was married. We actually got up super early in the morning, um, and we did this together uh, almost every morning. We each chose a different scripture passage and did this for a while. Um, I, I was thinking perhaps um, during our discipleship time, um, one of the cool things we can do is as, as um, cabins and as counselors that you can actually go around and share what is your word or your phrase, uh, what's your letter. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is you'll see as, as you go around the circle, sometimes you'll have the exact same word. Like maybe since mine was your hand will guide me, maybe one of yours was your hand will guide me, but your letter's completely different or it means something totally different from you. Or uh, maybe you'll, you'll hear, oh, I, I never even heard that sentence, there, uh, that word in there, and, and that's your word. Um, so this, this will be a good time. Um, is that all right to do that during, to during, that's during discipleship? Okay. Um, so counselors, you can kind of lead and share just what's your word or phrase, what's your letter. You don't have to like, if it, it, sometimes this gets very personal, so if there's part of your letter that's very personal that you don't want to share, you can kind of like edit that out or summarize it. Uh, sometimes that um, helps and you can share it uh, more in depth with a counselor or someone else later. Um, but this is, uh, this is um, I love it. So, um, and also, I'd love to hear kind of throughout the day uh, or later um, how you feel about this. Like, did you like it? Is it cool? Um, did it make sense? All that sort of stuff. So let me pray for us and I'll pray for our time together uh, in discipleship and uh, we can move on from there. God, thank you that you can speak to us, that you are always speaking to us, and all that you ask is that we would actually um, focus ourselves and be present, uh, that you speak to us more than we realize, uh, you speak to us through nature, you speak through us uh, through the beauty that is around us, you speak to us through the words of friends at times, you speak to us through worship music, you speak to us through preachers and through sermons, you speak to us through your word. And so I thank you, God, that this morning that we could spend time just hearing from you in your word. God, I pray for myself that you would remind me that your hand guides me, that you are everlasting, that, that even uh, I, if I go to Colorado, or if I go to Rhode Island, if I go to Chicago, uh, that you are with me, that you are everlasting, and that you are guiding me. And I pray for our students as well that they would know this true truth, that they would uh, be able to proclaim that, that your works are well and that they would be able to rest and know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. I pray for our time together in discipleship now as we uh, just meet as cabins and and with our counselors, that that we would be able to share this, uh, our Lectio Divina, uh, and and just be able to dialogue more with with how you're speaking to us, and and, and now what? This this so what? what, What's the thing we need to do next in response to this? Uh, Would you encourage us um, to to follow uh, you and to... um, more deeply uh, know you. Uh, Thank you for the counselors as well, for their willingness to spend time with us, uh, to uh, ask us questions, to to be people who listen to us. Um, And uh, I ask that we would just grow grow together as cabins and as as friends uh, in the next hour together. We pray this in your son's powerful name, uh, who is the image of the invisible God and who continues to speak to us through uh, your word, O God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh.